So I'll go ahead and left click to lock that into place. You'll see that the line turns blue because it's constrained properly. Um, that's just an indicator to let you give you some visual indication as to where and how the sketch will move. And you'll see things uh, change as we work through this sketch. Um, here I'm going to go ahead and just create another line that's not vertical. It doesn't have any constraints on it except for the, the connector point between the end point. Uh, if I were to go straight straight up, you'll see that it wants to use that last line I drew to infer constraints from. It's um, in this case, rather than going a vertical line, um, it's making it perpendicular, perpendicular to the previous line I created. Here I'm going to go ahead and create this line um, and continue on the chain. Here, what would be horizontal if I, wasn't, if I didn't have any other geometry in the sketch um, is picking up parallel with the baseline. You can see the parallel icon near my cursor, and you can see the parallel uh, icon down here on this baseline. So, as I rotate up, you'll see that I end up picking up perpendicular uh, to the previous line I sketched. But this is where the design intent comes in. You have to decide, based on what you're designing, uh, what types of constraints are appropriate. For example, if I make those lines parallel, and I'll go ahead and close this off, um, since these lines are parallel, if I remove the horizontal constraint and rotate this, these lines will continue to be parallel. And one of the ways you can see um, your constraints is if you right click in the graphics area, there's an option to show all constraints. You can also use F8 on your keyboard. Um, when you do that, it brings up a list of, or a, a graphical representation of all the constraints that have been added. As you hover over each of these icons, it will highlight the piece of geometry that it's linked to. Um, in this case, with the parallel, if I hover over it, it I'm going to do this a few times so you can see it. When I hover over it, it lights up the icon in yellow and it lights up all the geometry that's involved in the relationship. Um, so you can see this bottom line and this top line become white and the, eye, the parallel icons light up. So by putting this parallel constraint in, what we've done is built a relationship between the geometry. Now right now, because this baseline is horizontal, this top line will always be horizontal because they're parallel and uh, the relationships have been created. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to actually select this horizontal constraint right click on it and select delete and you'll see now it changed from blue to green because it has the ability to move in the sketch. So what I'm doing now is as, as I'm moving this you'll see this is no longer horizontal but these two lines are still parallel. So you can kind of get a feel for um, how the constraints affect the way the sketch sizes or changes shape. I'm going to go ahead and put the horizontal constraint back on um, and that's up in the constraint area on the ribbon bar and when I click that it'll snap back into place and I'm gonna show all constraints again which will bring back up the one that we just added. Next I'm gonna go ahead and add one more parallel to each side here and that is again in the constraints toolbar. Now I've got both sides being parallel. So to finish this sketch off, what I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and make this perpendicular, which will make that a square. So these are always at right angles to each other. Um, you can see both sets are parallel. The corner, or these two lines are perpendicular to each other, makes a perfect square. So the last step would be to add dimensions. Uh, I'm going to go ahead and hide my constraints uh, real quick. But adding dimensions will finish off constraining this sketch. So if I uh, either hit the D key on my keyboard or click the dimension tool up in the toolbar, I can actually add my dimensions now. I'll set this to four. Now you might notice that when I edit or when I place my dimensions, um, I have it set so that it automatically edits those dimensions because normally I don't draw exactly the dimensions I need so um, I've set Inventor to automatically launch the edit dialog right when I start. Now this is important too, something that we can call out as part of sketching is one of the things that's really uh, useful in Inventor is the ability to quickly make relationships between dimensions. Um, you can build equations, you can just link dimensions, but you can do it on the fly without a whole lot of tables and fancy configuration. 
you can always go to our, we do have a table that controls all our uh, equations, but uh, in this case, most of the time you can do things on the fly. So right now what I want to do is I want to set this dimension here, um, which is uh, dimension D6. I want to set it to half the size of this dimension. So what I can do is, you notice when I hover over the dimension up top, I can actually, it turns to a uh, hand icon. When I click that, it's going to put in the value or the name of the dimension I clicked. So if I say D5 and I hit just divided by 2, I can hit enter and I've built myself an equation. And you know this is an equation because it puts FX colon in front of it just to so you can see in the sketch that this has been driven by some type of formula. Um, one of the things you can do also is if um, if you want to see more detail about those dimensions, you can actually right click in the graphics window and select dimension display expression and what that'll do is actually provide you with the names of those dimensions and the formulas that are you be, being used to drive them um, this comes in handy just so you know the names of values or of the dimensions it'll let you see you know that d where d5 is in the in the sketch and what the formula is that actually drives it so what does that mean if i actually change this to go 7 you'll see that this dimension updates to be half that 7 dimension. Um, let me switch back to value and you can see so 3.5 is half of 7. So it, the formula is working. This is something that you'll use all the time once you get the hang of it. Uh, it comes in very handy. You don't have to jump into special crazy formula boxes or anything. So anyway, there's our first sketch. Um, we kind of went the long way around you know, to make a, a rectangle. Uh, when we could have just created a rectangle. But while we were doing it, we were able to show you all the constraints, how to add them, how to remove them, um, how to view what constraints are on your sketch. And from there, you can finish your sketch and begin creating 3D parts. So I hope this information was helpful to everyone, and I look forward to presenting to you in the future. Thanks.